Hello Future MDs! In this video, we're going to answer the Filipino Chemistry Practice Set 1, yung numbers 1 to 10. Link to Filipinos and Mat Reviewers will be put in the description below. I'd like to thank Simon G. Pecho for making this review. He's a graduate of BS Chemical Engineering from UP Diliman. Thank you rin sa Filipino for letting me use their questionnaires. If you find any corrections, just comment below para makorrect natin. Also, please share this NMAT review resources to help out other aspiring physicians out there. Yun lang, let's start! Problem number one. The chart below shows the acid-base testing of four samples. Based on the chart, which sample or samples are acids? So to solve this problem, dapat alam natin whether acid or base ba yung phenolphthalein at litmus paper natin. Yung phenolphthalein natin, isa siyang weak acid na madalas ginagamit as indicator in acid-base titration. Phenolphthalein in itself is colorless, pero pag na-dissociate siya into ions, pink yung kulay ng ions natin. Sa so sample 1, from pink to colorless, yung color change. Dapat, mas acidic yung sample 1 sa phenolphthalein para mag-manifest ang pink to colorless na color change. Yung sample 2 naman na nag-cause ng colorless to pink color change ay base. Yung litmus paper naman natin, pwedeng red, blue, na magkaiba yung acidity. Weak acid yung red litmus paper, while blue, while weak base rather naman yung blue litmus paper. So magiging blue yung red litmus paper pag base yung pinatak mo sa kanya, whereas magiging red naman yung blue litmus paper pag acid yung pinatak mo sa kanya. Yung blue to red na color change ng litmus paper sa sample 3 means acid yung sample 3. Yung red to blue naman na color change ng litmus paper sa sample 4 means base yung sample 4. So yung sagot sa problem number 1 ay C, samples 1 and 3. Problem number 2. The graph below represents the phase changes of water. Based on the graph, what change occurred when ice at 0 degrees Celsius was heated at a constant rate? So sa problem number 2, Mali na agad yung choice A na molecules broke apart into atoms kasi di naman na, dos, na dissociate into hydrogen and oxygen yung water. At ito rin ay isang klase ng chemical change. Yung scenario kasi sa problem 2 is phase change na hindi naman chemical change. Phase change is actually physical change na may magbabago sa itsura ng matter which is in this case sa problem natin ay change in intermolecular attraction, pero na-retain pa rin yung identity ng molecules. Kumbaga, water pa rin siya whether maging solid siya sa ice or gaseous siya sa steam. Mali rin yung choice B and D kasi chemical change sila pareho. At hindi physical change or more specifically, phase change. So yung sagot sa problem number 2 ay C. Intermolecular attractions were decreased. Problem number 3. When the volume of a gas is decreased at a constant temperature, the pressure increases because the molecules blank. So, paano natin i-approach yung problem na to? We can assume na ideal gas ito to relate yung pressure and volume natin. So, we have yung equation na PV is equal to nRT, wherein yung nRT natin, that's moles times the gas constant times yung constant na temperature, they are constant. I-represent lang natin yung constant as K. And then, ililipat lang natin sa kabilang side ng equation yung V. Now, pag binaba natin yung volume, tataas yung buong K over V. Therefore, tataas yung pressure natin. Since pressure is defined as force per unit area, masasabi natin directly proportional yung pressure at yung force tataas din gaya ng pressure. So, yung sagot sa problem number 3 ay E. Strike a unit area of the container more often. Problem number 4. Which property do the liquid phase and the gas phase of a substance have in common? Kung titingnan natin yung choices, mali na si A kasi liquids are incompressible. Mali na rin yung C since mas mataas yung, usually mataas yung density ng solid natin. Usually, mababa naman yung density ng gas at mas mataas usually yung density ng liquid kaysa sa gas. Mali na rin yung D 
kasi mas mataas yung kinetic energy ng gases kaysa liquids. So yung sagot sa problem number 4 ay D. Both phases lack a definite shape kasi both are confined within the shape of the container. Problem number 5. What volume of 12 molar HCl is required to make 75 ml of 3.5 molar ng HCl? So to solve this problem, dapat alam natin yung definition ng molarity, which is mole over volume, mole ng alin, mole ng solute over liter ng solution. Pwede rin natin siyang i-express as millimole ng solute over millimole ng solution or kilomole ng solute over kiloliter ng solution. At a constant mole of solute, molarity ng substance 2 times volume ng substance 2 ay equal sa molarity ng substance 1 times volume ng substance 1. Solving for V2 or volume ng 12 molar HCl, we arrive at 3.5 times 75 ml over 12. Reducible yung 75 over 12 to 25 over 4. While yung 3.5 over 4 pwedeng ma-approximate as 1. Ngayon, titignan natin yung choices na malapit sa 25 ml. So yung sagot sa problem number 5 ay, so mali na yung B, mali na yung C, mali na rin yung D. So yung sagot sa problem number 5 ay A. 21.9 ml na malapit sa 25 ml. Problem number 6. Air pollution from automobile exhaust is minimized by using electric cars powered by lead-acid batteries. What will be a negative effect of using lead-acid batteries? So sa problem na to, mali na as C, C and D. Kasi yung oxygen and hydrogen naman natin ay relatively safe. Whereas, Yung metal na ginagamit sa lead-acid batteries ay may low density. And now, we're left with choices A and B. Well, pareho namang toxic yung metals and sulfuric acid natin. Pero yung sinasabi sa choice B is yung advantage ng sulfuric acid at hindi yung harmful effect nito. So, consider na rin natin mali yung choice B. So, yung sagot sa problem number 6 ay A. Toxic metal in the batteries will enter the environment. Problem number seven, which set of tools will provide the most precise measurements for calculating the density of an irregularly shaped rock? So sa problem number seven, mali na agad yung choices A and B. Na parehong may flask kasi mababa yung accuracy ng flask in measuring volume. At isa pang purpose ng flask natin is to store and mix liquids. Whereas yung sa C and D na parehong may graduated, graduated cylinder, Ang function naman niya is pwede siya mag-measure ng volume kasi meron siyang higher accuracy than both flask and beaker. Well, since density ng rock ang gusto nating ma-determine, kailangan din natin kunin yung mass nito gamit yung balance natin. So meron na tayong mass galing sa balance at volume galing sa graduated cylinder. Makukuha na natin yung density which is equal sa mass over volume. So yung sagot sa problem number 7 ay C. Balance and graduated cylinder. Problem number 8. Water has a higher boiling point than compounds of similar molecular weight. Which of the following best explains this phenomenon? So yung problem number 8, tungkol siya sa intermolecular forces na ang sinasabi nun, kaya nitong mag-predict ng boiling points. The stronger the intermolecular force, the lower the vapor pressure, hence higher yung boiling point. At yung intermolecular force na nag-govern sa water ay hydrogen bonding. So yung sagot sa problem number 8 ay A. Extensive hydrogen bonding exists between water molecules. Problem number 9. According to IUPAC nomenclature, which of the following is the name for the compound shown below? So yung first step sa problem na to is to determine the longest carbon chain. Start tayo dito. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So meron itong 6 na possible longest carbon chain. Wherein yung carbons ay represented by the ends and vertices ng skeletal formula. Or rather, skeletal structure. Baka may mahanap pa tayong mas mahaba. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
7 o ito mas mahaba so meron siyang 7 na under our possible longest carbon chain baka may isa pa try natin to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so ito may 8 na under ng longest carbon chain mukhang ito na nga yung longest carbon chain so octane yung compound natin mali na agad yung a b c and e now we're left with choice b i-prove natin yung choice b so paano natin to mapuprove dapat yung numbering ng substituents must be as low as possible so start tayo dito so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 kasi kung magsa-start tayo sa kabila higher yung number ng substituents dito itong dalawa so ang labels nila ay 2 methyl 3 methyl and 4 ethyl so tama nga yung choice B natin na 4 ethyl 2 3 dimethyl octane problem number 10 what is the molarity of a 2 liter solution containing 58 grams of sodium chloride so kung mapapansin natin sa problem number 10 mass ng solute NaCl and this na mole yung binigay para ma-convert to mole kailangan natin ng molar mass ng NaCl makukuha lang yan by adding yung molar mass ng sodium plus molar mass ng Cl solving it we arrive at 58.45 grams NaCl per mole NaCl then we solve for mole ito we can just approximate this as 1 mole ng NaCl then by getting the molarity, which is mole ng solute NaCl over liter ng solution, we arrive at 0.5 molars. So yung sagot sa problem number 10 ay A, 0.5 molars.